still rolling. It is sunny here in San Antonio, but it is getting to that time of year where garden beds such as this will need to be mulched over to protect them for the winter. And given that this is one bed in thousands across the city, getting an accurate estimate, getting good numbers of total area, the total perimeter, total volume, will make a big difference to the numbers in terms of not having to overspend on product to cover this. This little box here, Mosier One, has a new earth moving feature, I would almost call it, that will measure every bump, every depression, every change in elevation of this whole space. Already we know that it will measure the distances, we know that it will measure elevation. It will now go one step further with a new feature that I am just being introduced to myself, I'm getting to grips to with myself. I've had one go already, it is so easy and so I think this will be a good opportunity, a good indication of how easy it is to use because if I can do it, anyone else can. So I'll get straight to it, I'm going to pop it in here, twizzle this stick, like I'm Babe Ruth with a baseball bat. Launch Mosier One, the Mosier Pro app that is. There we go, close shape. Let's start in this corner. Now what I like about this space, I said we want as accurate numbers as possible. I'm gonna go, cause the ground here is irregular shaped. I'm gonna switch from straight line to trace. Off I go. And as I move and trace, every curve, every bend of every millimeter off this shape, you can see it drawn on the screen right now, has just been measured and captured with the numbers. On I go and trace all the way around, gliding over the surface, place it down again. And I'm gonna keep going if you wanna come with me, all the way around. Here I am mid measurement, and now I'm gonna go from trace to straight line, done back to trace again, and on we go, on and on. Okay, the shape of this space that unfolds before me is changing again, I'm gonna go from trace, which is great, to, let's see, straight line. And what I like about swapping path types on Mosier One is that it allows me to get a more accurate representation of this whole space, which is giving me peace of mind. Can you imagine trying to measure that whole space, you know, with, uh, with other measuring equipment and splitting it all up into grids and trying to get an accurate rep representation? I know I'm introducing major error into this. Now here, what I like again, I'm still in straight line. I'm placing it on rough ground. I mean, there it was soft, there it was smooth. Here I've got, I don't know, leaves and bits of sticks and foliage. And this is what I like about Mosier One is that it just glides over this rough surface. I don't have to worry about it. And it's capturing straight lines from there to here, even though I've just moved around the obstacle. Across I go to here, placed in the corner again, moving the stick over all of the obstacles like the overhanging foliage and the branches, placed it here in the corner. And because Mosier One is built at an angle or is shaped with an angle in the corner, it can really get into the corners here and get a more accurate representation of this whole space. And Mosier One is capturing just not all the straight lines, not only, sorry, all the straight lines, it's capturing all the elevation changes as I move around, despite the fact that this is a pretty unforgiving terrain with all of the overhanging debris, all of the leaves. And I will say, you know, with Mosier One, I have learned the different techniques and placing it down on different terrain. You know, if it's on a footpath, it's quite easy. You know, you just place it down, don't have to worry about it. But when it's on more rough terrain like sticks, twigs, leaves, I place it down, push it down ever so slightly because there's a springiness to the leaves. So I want to push it down, make sure that it's motionless. And then I let, this, the, um, I let the stick rest between my thumb and my index finger. It is now still, I can be chilled, like really relaxed here in the sun in San Antonio. Let the point be captured. It draws it all out. I don't have to worry about it. Whoa. I'm so glad that this is a small, nimble, little device. It's not big, it's not heavy, it's not cumbersome. I can be like a mountain goat on this garden bed between the rocks and the, the garden bed itself because Mosier One 
it's got no weight to it at all. It's so nimble and I can bimble around, dance between the rocks, move in between all the obstacles, not stumble on the rocks because, you know, there's no weight to it all. I've just pulled it out of my pocket. Now watch what happens when I get to the, my start point. I'm going to place it here, but I am not going to press the stop, start, new measurement button. That's the red button at the bottom center. I'm going to change my path type from straight line to points path. And then I'm going to move and capture anywhere where I see an elevation change. What I'm doing is I am taking a topographical survey of this whole space. And by the end, I will have the total, not only the total area, but the surface area. The point of note, here I, it's almost flat, it's imperceptible. So I don't need to take many points where there's very little elevation change, but going up here, we can see that the elevation changes more rapidly, it increases. So therefore I'm going to take more points and that's going to make my measurement more accurate. Another reason why I love getting a topographical survey on terrain such as this with beautiful plants, foliage, trees, roots everywhere. With Mosier 1, I can just place it down in between it all and it is capturing the surface area of this whole space. I don't have to worry about, and look, I'm like I'm not trampling on the plants. My equipment isn't trampling on the plants. I'm not flattening anything. You know, the gardener isn't gonna go mad with me. It just moves in and out between all the spaces, capturing all the elevation differences. I'm taking care when I place Moja one down, not to place it on any twigs or any pebbles or any acorns, um, because if I do, the device is going to rock backwards and forwards and it's going to think as a motion-based measuring device that I am intentionally in motion and therefore measuring. So I have the luxury with Mojo One of placing it down on any place that I see is nice and smooth, debris free. It's motionless and therefore it captures the point. Okay, so now that I've got this point, I think I've covered the whole area. I'm going to make my way back to the start. So let's just go for it now. Just making sure not to trip over, not to stomp on any plants. Let's make my way back. Okay, I started over here. Hey Theo, place it down here. Okay, now I'm gonna stop that. Now you can see that with this little device, just this small little device, I have bimbled around this whole space. And you could be forgiven for thinking that Moja 1 has just captured the distances, the total area and the perimeter, which is awesome. Because it's, by the way, it's drawn it all out at the same time, which is saving me a lot of time later having to do that. But if I flip from 2D to 3D, we can see if I pan around for you, it's a whole new world. We can see the three dimensions of this whole space. And if I select where I started, We've got a coordinate X, Y, and Z, which is this point here. And if I just go to view and scroll along to cross section and pick any other point along this space that I've captured, you can see that I've got the length, the rise, and the run. Let's do a deep dive just quickly. Press cross section button, and we have the gradient as well. It's so quick, so easy, but there is more. So if I go back to my view button and scroll along and click the 3D surface area icon, we now see that we've captured the surface area of this whole space. And visually, it is illustrating the elevation change of this space. And if I go to my edit button, select my cut and fill calculator, we can see that it's got a slider. Let's have a bit of fun with that. Let's slide it to the left, let's slide it up. We can see that the cut, the fill, the net, and all the level values are changing and so what that means let's say if I want to select uh, if I want to select net and zero that let's say I wanted to level this whole side which we don't but just to show you the power it's telling me that I need to move the red section excavate that and fill into the blue section which is this down to there and it'll all be leveled if I move the slider to the left 
and so we have zero fill. If I wanted to excavate all of this, that would be 138.6 cubic yards or thereabouts. Let's say I wanted to fill it all, so I wanted levels, then that's 103. Let's go to another calculator, the depth calculator. Go to edit, add depth. Now let's say that we wanted to put mulch on this space. I'm going to select the pen icon. A little calculator comes up. I will put in three inches. And we can see the volume of product that we need. Let me zoom in so you can see. Can you see that? 10.5 cubic yards. If I move the slider up, you can see it more visually. So there you go. Moja One. It's a new feature. Volume calculator, depth calculator, surface area calculator. Oh, I nearly forgot we have another uh, view as well. If I go across to the icon on the end, we can see this whole space in contours. And we've got all contour lines which are connecting elevation points of equal, or points of equal elevation, so to speak. All done, re-engineered, reimagined by the wizardly engineers back in Warwick, back in Middle Earth, UK. They have stuffed into this little back black box. Mojo wine. Love it.